the champ. He's fat! Meerkat Mob. I gotta feed the streets. My pistol gon' bleed the streets. Ski mask on my face. Sometimes you gotta cheat to stay ahead in this bitch. Ah, drink surf like it's liquor. Street life, I have you catching up to God quicker. Yeah. Stick ah, AK-40 to your lip ah. Let the chopper bang on you like a blood or a crip ah. Flip ah, so much bread, I'm a gymnast. Made so much money, I'm a dumbest, I'm a dumbest. Mister, body catcher, slaughter gang, soul snatcher. Uh, ain't no regular F-150, this a fucking rapper yeah. No capper, street nigga, not a rapper Chopper hit him and he turn into a booty clapper Smith and Wilson, a 4L gang reppin' We done baptized more niggas than the damn reverend Kappa Alpha, me and my gang, we do all the steppin' Who you checkin'? It's f and shoot East or West End I gotta beat the streets, my pistol gon' bleed the streets Ski mask on my face, sometimes you gotta cheat To stay ahead in this bitch, you oh. fat! Drink surf like it's liquor Street life, I have you catching up to God Quick oh. stick on oh. AK-40 to your lip, oh Let the chopper bang on you like a blood or a crip, oh Flip, oh. so much bread, I'm a gymnast Made so much money, I'm oh, the dumbest, I'm oh, the dumbest Yeah, In my bang, in my swing, in my cool The veal, scoop, the veal Like that right back, top of the hill Wheel in my hand with a trunk full of contraband Swimming underwater like I'm Aquaman I used to drink gin, I was vodka, man False dog, it's a ball of no propaganda Pop your band, don't try and stop the plan I rock your land, step back and pop your man Spaced out, caked out, no bugaboo Flipped out, crept out, nigga, what it really do? Time brings change so I changed my name Trying to take flight while they clipping my wings Groupy ass niggas see you tripping the game With nothing to gain Plop, plop, popping up bang Can't lack a crocus sack Hip hopper, click lacker Tip tapper, pimp slapper Ain't trying to act up, don't want to act up My nigga back up, nigga back up Hey back up, hey baby back up Baby back up, back up My nigga back up, nigga back up Back up, hey scoop the veal, turn the track Days later, I'm back on the streets. Got a batch of bomb beach shit. I'm trying to eat feet to the pavement. Money, I'm craving it. What about the bitches, dog? Are you saving them? Can a blind man see? Can a shark survive out of water for a week? A snitch is a snitch if he solidly speak. I don't know near nutter. I'm a product of the beach. To each its own. Hard as stone. A lot of y'all niggas bought as hard as phone. Dead wrong. Trying to sneak to Mika the phone. Step back, nephew. I feel the heat of the chrome. G Ma and Paw Paw in the heat of Macomb. Plate full of shit, nigga. I never eat it alone. Damn. Eat it alone. Then I put the weed in the bone. Step back at the feet of my phone. Dog. What the fuck? What the fuck? Can't lack a crocus sack. Hip hop. Click clack. Tip tap. Pimp slap. Ain't trying to act up. Don't want to act up. My nigga back up. Nigga back up. Nigga back up. Hey baby back up. Baby back up. Back up. My nigga back up. Nigga back up. Back up. I scoop the veal. Turn the track up. Cinematic. Right back at it. Talk to walk and walk out that static. I am the extra dramatic. When he pop back, everybody scattered. Didn't matter. Mm. I was there from the get go. Moving heavyweights, Klitschko. Rookies and cookies from Frisco. Put him in the box, Nabisco. We the funk that killed disco. I showed you how to go and get this though. And I'm the reason why you're fucking with this hoe. But don't thank me. That's how the shit go. It's still banging crypto. From the intro. Baller alert. The calling out Baller alert. Got no problem with Baller alert. Is everybody on Baller alert? And anybody else out there talking shit about me? Here we go. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to uh, a Swaycast mini. A Swaycast uh, quickie. Uh, a shorty, if you will. And um, it has happened, you guys. It has happened. I know many people. Um, as as well as me, we're optimistic that this documentary would exist and we would see what's going to happen when a human being interacts with a pig roach and has them on camera. Well, 
the pig roach canceled, dude. It pulled out. Um, and uh, there are various different reasons why this happened. Uh, well, we don't really know what is the, the actual reason, but I guess let's just watch the segment of a podcast. This shit is like 20-something minutes long, so it's probably not going to be a very long stream. Uh, but I wanted to go through it and see what the guy says. And that's basically it. That's it. So uh, what we know is that they never really got to the actual production stage of the documentary. It was canceled in pre-production. It was effectively 100% DSP's fault because he claims that he's very stressed out and he doesn't have time to do it and etc. etc. It was like an actual laundry list of reasons why not to do it. Um, so yeah. So he ended up wasting a bunch of Mike's time and efforts and some money because Mike was actually traveling to Seattle to talk with Phil in, in Big Cat. Um, so yeah, well, thanks. Thanks for the money, Clummy. <sighs> okay, let's, uh, let's get right into it. All right. Guys, it's time for us to get to the main event, what everyone wants to hear about. So I need to, to, to really do this, I need to recap because now it's been a while since we've talked about it. So here's the deal. And All this right. this recap goes on for like 20 minutes, but I'm going to watch the whole thing because I might have a, a thing or two to say about it. And also probably you guys haven't seen it since it happened. Like, I don't know, like what? Not even 12 hours ago. It's actually like 16, 18 hours ago. So it's basically, pretty recent. It, it, not that it leaked, but basically it made the rounds on the internet. And then eventually I addressed it about a week or two ago that I am working with a documentarian by the name of Mike Klum. And he's already being dishonest. It didn't leak. Like, he, he prevented himself from saying that. But Mike himself went out of his way to make it public. It's not like he told somebody and then they spread it on Kiwi Farms. Mike himself went on Kiwi Farms and announced it. On making a documentary about myself. So already, from the first sentence, we're already being dishonest or not entirely transparent. Here on YouTube. Now, Mike had previously made one documentary about Boogie. And that released back in October, okay? And there's mixed feelings about that documentary, all right? A lot of people seem to be of the impression that the documentary is incredibly great quality, but also that the documentary makes Boogie look terrible. And why did Boogie even participate in it? Because uh, he gets off on it. He got a humiliation fetish. He gets off on people hating on him and making himself look terrible and pathetic. Because, I mean, he is. If the whole point... What is he supposed to make himself like DSP? Where it's just like completely... Uh, just faking what he is if the documentary you know didn't make him look good at all just made him look bad and the thing is i had not seen the documentary and i'll tell you i've seen it and it, yeah i agree with everybody that i just think that the documentary is a sad t telling of boogie's life you know um and what can i say maybe he's just that type of person right and that's what he wanted to be portrayed on the internet i, I wouldn't know because i'm not boogie you know i don't <laughs> i don't know what the thought process there was in the making of that document. There was no thought okay. process. It was, uh, it was just desperation, bro. I mean, the whole documentary is about how desperate he is and how he's going to do anything by any means to just make some money and survive, I guess. That was, that was my takeaway from all that shit. And that, that was then solidified when Boogie just joined the Lol Cow podcast, and now Keemstar is using him for a doormat, essentially. Okay, but basically... uh. You know, for me, you guys know what I go through on a daily basis. You know the massive amount of harassment, slander, and nonsense that happens all the time. And you also know that I literally just ignore it. I <laughs> this is actually super ironic because this very stream, he was talking about the latest and greatest in trolling, which is people from foreign countries and Spanish-speaking countries, namely Argentina, have found a way to give him money and get the benefit for it by just giving him, like, pennies. Like, actual pennies. No attention to any of the nonsense that happens outside of these streams. And when idiots try to come to the stream and troll, we just handle it, we move right. on maturely, and we just sure. move on with our day. Oh, and again, I, I have to mention, uh, we're getting a fashion police segment. Uh, this is, as you can see, he is serving, yet again, medieval peasant. Think Black, black Plague level drip. He is, um... Uh, uh, eyeing the corner demons and licking his lips, as you can see. Very delicious corner demon. Maybe it looks like a, I don't know, a cake? I don't let it affect me or derail me or stop me. 
right? I love what I do for a living. I love my- Yeah, it does. It looks like a burlap sack. <laughs> private personal life. I love everything about my life. I'm not going to let so many negative influences all over the internet stop me from having a great positive life. Sure. I refuse. Okay, okay, Phil. And maybe to some extent, that's one of the major reasons. <laughs> yeah, it really does look like a Witcher 3 NPC. That's a, that's a good one. Why I get so much negativity because <laughs> people can't stand that. They can't stand that someone <laughs> survives again. No, I'm, I'm not going to watch anything that Review Tech USA put out. I think he's pathetic, and uh, I want to give him as little attention as possible. It's all odds that someone is still, a hair in my mouth, successful, despite all the efforts of so many people who, for some very weird, confusing reason, want to hurt me, right? So <laughs> this is, by the way, this is the narrative, is that, that he is successful despite the hate. Uh, so, also known as, he is still the king of hate, by the way. That was his whole persona. It is what it is. And the thing is that over the years, <clears throat> obviously, I have learned to basically be a more private person. I don't show you guys my private life anymore. I used to be. When I started on YouTube, everything was transparent. I was vlogging everything that I did in my house when I went on trips. You know, I had vlogs out the ass. Even when I moved out here 10 years ago, I was vlogging the whole move and everything. And then what I found is that increasingly as this crazy toxicity movement towards me on the internet continued right people just kept escalating the level it wasn't just oh phil's a bad game. look that's the, that's the thing with the reasons why people hate him is that there's a difference between the reason that has been documented and is very easily to find and him admitting that that's a reason and him accepting that this is why people hate him so there is a clash in between. So he, he just can't accept it. Therefore, there are no reasons why people hate him that are legitimate because he needs to approve it, you know, as a delusional narcissist. Gamer anymore or Phil's videos aren't that good anymore. It became Phil's a bad person. We want to actually hurt Phil. Let's do what we can to ruin Phil's life. And so a lot of those private things that I put out there in my vlogging ended up being used as toxic insulting or even dangerous things like what? against myself and my family in so, uh, so yeah, dude come on so he showed something in a vlog that was then toxified like like what like the coffee maker well i mean i don't see people like um i don't know uh, keemstar walking around their house and people zooming into their coffee maker and asking him how much money it costs because keemstar doesn't make his fucking personal finances public knowledge and then use that to get fucking sympathy. <clears throat> I always tell the story, all right, that basically one day I was doing a vlog in my kitchen, and I can't remember what it was. It yeah, was this like is it. DSP this is the coffee maker. All the time where I would try products. Get out of here. Great. And I had a statement sitting on my countertop by accident. It shouldn't have been there, but I left it there for the filming. I didn't realize it. And just for just a couple frames, it panned into the camera, right? These people are so crazy, they called the utility company, as listed on that statement, they impersonated me oh, with not very the basic maker, info, man. and they told the company to turn off my power. Okay, this is toxified, obviously, I do not en endorse doing stuff like this, and you should never do it, but what I also don't endorse is having any kind of personal documents that reveal any kind of personal information in your YouTube video or vlog or stream. This is just not a good thing. Do not do this. You may think that's funny, but it's not. That's... Oh, and now I'm seeing two people in chat pointing out that he, he picked it up and said, what are you going to do? You already have my address. So, wow, that's interesting. I want to actually check out. Uh, which, on which channel is this? Pigpiggo.re. Um, have my address. If that's the correct quote, let's hope it is. Mm, no, nah, I don't think it is. It's going to be kind of difficult to find. Hopefully somebody's going to find it at some point basically a pain in the ass for everyone involved for them for me they can't just flip a switch like this it's a it's a thing to turn power off and on it costs money dsp doesn't want the cop out the bag that he has a mobile game addiction he wants to keep on keeping on no accountability from phil hermit piggy pig knows well i mean that's kind of like the the mobile game addiction is is just a streisand effect at this point he's not really hiding it he's just not acknowledging it very well but everybody knows it's it's like a public secret really Everyone knows that he's a mobile game addict. You can go watch the, the WPIG stream that uh, me and ALT did. He was playing the game for six to eight hours a day. 
staying until like 4 a.m. in the morning to grind out. One week, he himself admitted on a public forum that he played the game for two weeks straight, and in those weeks, he put in 82 hours of gameplay. 82 hours in Supercard. He was forcing Panda Lee to play the game as well. He admits that himself. That whole stream is amazing, man. Go watch it at least, if not just the first he part. He doesn't show us any more half. personal things anymore, but now it's just him saying he has this important problem that he always needs us to be aware of. Well, that is, um, that is like foreshadowing drama. That's, that's what I, I see that in. Uh, as, as like, yeah, you guys, you might think personally right now everything is going fine, but there is something that is not fine behind the scenes, but I can't tell you about it. So don't, don't get too relaxed. Unlike a normal streamer where they want you to feel relaxed and chill in, in their streams, Phil wants you to constantly feel like you're on edge. So at any point, he can pull out the emergency excuse and you have to give me money. Cost time. And if it turns off, what if I have no power now for a day or two and I can't work and there's no heat? It's fucked up. This is yeah, what, it is this, fucked up, That's how up, crazy Phil. they are. Now, this is a story from many years ago. Since then... Things have escalated to levels you guys don't even want to know about with the level of things that have happened, the harassment of myself and my family, okay? So that's just one example. So that's why you guys don't see me doing that kind of stuff anymore. I've made this very sharp division between what you see on camera and what's my private life off camera. You'll see stuff in this office and that's it. I don't go through my house vlogging. I don't show you what my wife and I do privately. That's none of your business, all right? And... In fact, even my wife, Kat, has stayed, you know, off camera for a very long time. It's only recently, in the last couple of weeks, that she's made the active decision to come back into my content and start being on my streams again, which I'm very happy about. But even then, look how long it took to get okay. that Okay, you see, so uh, he's saying here that he's happy that Kat is back. So it makes me think that Kat being on stream has nothing to do with the documentary being canceled and people cyberbullying Kat has nothing to do with the documentary being canceled. And I think that in general... Phil does things, um, how do I say it, um, for himself, uh, first and foremost for himself. So if he's going to quit the documentary, it's going to be because he wants to do it, not because Kat told him that somebody was calling her fat or something. Level of like trust and feeling that it was going to be okay. If he wanted to do it, if he really wanted to do it, he would have done it regardless of anything. To do so and it would be safe, right? So. Oh, thanks, uh, thanks, Hate Army, for the clip. So we found it, dude. We found the clip of uh, DSP doxifying himself. Let's see it here. What? Everyone yep. knows my address at this point. It's it is a bro. What? It's on the fucking internet. I mean, holy shit. Like, dog. <laughs> it's straight up like the first frame is literally just the envelope with the address right in the center of the screen. It's like, yeah, you have my address. Look at this. Wow, goddamn. So this is DSP's Condo Tour 2011 Part 1 at the 9 in uh, nine minute 10 second mark. So yeah, DSP, we might need a, a refresh on what, just, uh, what you just said. That level of separation has come kind of an air of mystery. People who just make stuff up, crazy conspiracies, and everyone's always wondered, you know, what's it like? in Phil's life because we don't see Phil's life. It's this level of, of, of mystique almost around it. And in truth, I don't think it's that interesting, but I guess a lot of people are very interested about the personal side of Dark Side Phil, okay? So basically for a few months now, this isn't just something that happened recently. This is something that's been worked on now for a few months is that Mike yeah. Plum and I were, went, got into this. Worked on means that you wasted all of his fucking time, by the way. Because all Phil had to do was write a couple of emails, and eventually when Mike showed up to the house, they just went to lunch or something. While the dude actually had to put in effort and money into this. And the dude was, uh, DSP was just misleading him and leading him along, and just wasting all of his fucking time being unprofessional as fuck. Because all these reasons that he's about to give you, why the, uh, the documentary didn't happen, is things that you're supposed to think before you commit to a project like this. This is something you actually should consider before going into it. Discussions and everything about a documentary and what it would be. And as I've explained to you guys, all right, this documentary is not an interview. This is not just someone sitting down with me and getting answers to questions and then you interpret it as you want. This is supposed to be my life story. This is covering, you know, me growing up as a kid, what it was like for me in school and, and then growing up becoming a gamer 
and then going getting into competitive Street Fighter and what that was like. And having yeah, people... most people already know that and don't give a fuck. And your average YouTube viewer is not going to give a fuck. They're going to care about what makes this guy a lol cow. Oh, man, I've heard a lot about Dark Side Phil. I wonder what quirky and weird things he does. And then you tune into a documentary that has the first 20 to 30 minutes be about how this guy grew up and how he played a bunch of video games. With the memberships, he's mad he doesn't want that to make him look like he's doing good. All the evidences and hypocritical takes, someone is trying to make him look stupid. We try to make him look bad, thoughtful face, homicia pattern, can't put it together, right magnifying glass. That was, uh, the whole membership thing was, was fucking hilarious, man. Because he just exposed himself for only thinking about himself and not giving a fuck about the community. Uh, and he said something along the lines of like, well, I'm, I'm happy about you guys getting the perks, but I got nothing out of it. He was super salty. And he started saying, like, um, something that was kind of like, what was it? Oh, yeah, it, it's not a big deal to me. And then two minutes later, he explains exactly why it's a big deal and how it hurts him. It's fucking great. Th this dude has absolutely no consistency. From along my life oh, involved in An air of mystery. Lol, get over yourself, Phil. Thinks he's the bell of the ball. He loves attention so much. Yeah, that's that's why I thought he would actually go through with it and do the thing because that's how much he loves attention. Again, if you go and check out my stream with ALT on the WPIG channel with the WWE Supercard, he was so fucking clear that this dude is starving for attention because at the time he was having like thousands of people watch his videos and kissing his ass and he needed other an entire other group of people on a forum dedicated to a mobile game to also be kissing his ass. He was obsessed with clout, obsessed with acknowledgement, obsessed with attention. This dude is like a he's a, a <laughs> I don't even know how to call it, man. He's the ego monster. Project, you know, people who positively like me and know me and can talk about my history and past cuz they were there. Okay? It is literally a biography. It's a documentary and a biography of me. Okay? Now, this isn't just going to be positive stuff because no one wants to just watch a video that's just going to kiss my ass for an hour straight. This is also going to cover all of the stuff that's been going on in the last 15 years since I became a YouTuber, a lot of which has been toxic and negative. People were gonna, are going to be featured in this, including some of my biggest critics on the internet. Look at this now, uh, the face he's going to make when he talks about his detractors, the little squinty face, the, the little mocking face, as if uh, to discredit what they have to say. Mike will spill the beans and stop talking about Phil's beautiful voice. Uh, I don't think he's going to do it um, to an unprofessional extent. Uh, I invited him on Twitter on, on TBS if he wants to come over and share what his experience was, because now we can actually ask him. If, uh, if having Cat on stream was his idea and some other stuff and just generally what they talked about. Of course, we're not going to ask him like super deep stuff and uh, want him to expose DSP because I don't think that's something that he would be even willing to do in the first place. But it would be interesting just to, to get the, the take of somebody who was kind of neutral and had a firsthand experience with Dave. To get their take on what it is they really don't like about me. and they Yeah, look at this nice squinty face. Yeah, something that they really don't like about me. Have a problem with before and stuff like that, okay? <clears throat> so basically, it's supposed to be an even side. Yeah, it goes for the membership. Yes, there's R, be dude. positive stuff and there's going to be negative. But for the first time ever, and big birds for it'll six months. all be together in one thing, right? Um, as opposed to, well, if you want to hear anything negative, watch one of these 5,000 people that just shit on me for clickbait views on YouTube, and they okay. all benefit by doing it. Well, now you kind of have to. That's it. Well, he pulled out of this, so all you're left with is uh, Secret Limited, Ex Mortis, The Decepticron, Turkey Tom. Um, I would say down the rabbit hole, but that one is just incredibly outdated. That it, It's not only outdated, it's also not entertaining. It's very kind of dry. And I think the June the King one is also going to be very dry because that, that one is like you're reading a Wikipedia article. But if you want to hear something positive about me, you got to come watch me on my content because who's going to do that? Who, When you're seeing 5,000 negative things about someone, who's going to actually bother to come check out the real content the person makes to see if any of it's true? Not many people. Yeah. It's a testament to that right now on stream we have 500 viewers. As opposed to if one of these toxic streamers turns on their stream just to shit on me for an hour, they get probably get thousands of viewers. Because yeah. that's idiot people on the internet. No, because that's entertaining. Because that's all you're good for, Phil. That's all you're good for. It's people dunking on you and making fun of you.
in ridiculing you in new and innovative ways. It's the only thing you're worth, Phil. Not the meaningful gameplay and the throwback reactions and all that other gimmick shit. They like, you know, when you're a complete- That shit, like, even his fans don't watch that. Even his fans don't like it. His react channel is dead in the water. The throwback channel is dead in the water. The cat Q&As got canceled after two weeks because they just have nothing else to say. They got no interesting questions. The asshole, and all you care about is hurting others, you enjoy negative toxic content. You get your jollies off when someone else is hurting. Good for you. You're a really good Baller person, alert. right? I mean, no. Those well, Phil, you're the one who's jerking yourself over being a really good person and trying to say how much of a good person you are for the last 15 years. And everything you do paints you in a worse and worse picture. So I don't think if, if I had to have some kind of a takeaway and a moral of the story is just don't try and make yourself out to be a good person on the Internet because it doesn't fucking matter. In the end of the day, nobody's going to really give a fuck. You put out interesting, entertaining stuff. They're not really going to care if you're a, a not a good person. People are not good people, but there's ridiculous amounts of them. Because those people that constantly virtue signal about how good people they are, eventually get, they get exposed for not being very good people. And the downfall is even bigger than everybody else. Because you had incredible amount of trust in those people. Planet. It's sad that that's what's happened to human society, right? So... The thing is, all the attempts that I've made to try to get a fair shake have never worked. You know, I had an interview. So the conclusion is this. I have no sympathy. With the quartering many years ago. And I felt the interview went fine, except when the interview ended, everyone just gave him shit because he didn't just stand there and pester me constantly. No. They gave him shit because he didn't give a fuck. He might have as well just been scrolling on Twitter on his phone the whole time while you give him a pre-stream. Like, it was just like, it was, it was not even an interview. It was just like a pre-stream on somebody else's channel. That's what it was. With toxic conspiracy theory questions. So it was like, oh, that interview sucked. It is then sucked. I on side scrollers, and for five hours, they pound me with questions. Never prepared me for the questions, by the way. Just pounded me with these questions. I answered to the best of my ability, but it became apparent that they were trying to trap me into some kind of a big confession that wasn't going to happen because I wasn't going to confess to something I didn't do. But this is what they were banking on. Yeah, he's, gonna... you know, that's the first true thing that he said. He wasn't going to confess and he, he's never going to confess because if he does, it's a, it's a domino that's going to crumble his whole life. And I get the scoop and they were going to get me to confess to all this stuff that I didn't do so that they would have, be able to. But regardless of whether or not he confessed, he just looked guilty. That's it. You, you don't actually have to confess at this point. Everybody just thinks you're guilty. So enjoy that for the rest of your life. Break the story on the internet and get notoriety so that then their show could get big and they could make money, right? When that didn't happen, instead they turned it into a way to shit on me for months on end and make money off of my detractors, right? Hell yeah. So again, whenever I try in some way <clears throat> to get a fair shake, right, it doesn't happen. So this documentary is the best chance I can have to get a fair shake. And because I'm, you know, involved in it and I'm going to have a positive side to it, right? I feel like that's why it's going to be even and balanced and fair. Yes, there's going to be negative stuff there. And by the way, it's also going to be funny. There's going to be a lot of comedy stuff in there yeah, too. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, my life is 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 Well, that's the thing. Why are we actually having this segment talking about the documentary and what it's going to be when 10 minutes from now he's just going to say it's canceled? So this whole time, he knew it was going to be canceled, but he, he went out of his way to, like, do a, a marketing segment and a promotional segment about a documentary. He knew it's not happening. Also, happy and positive and fun. This is not just <clears throat> serious business, Phil. Serious sure business, there Phil. There's in there talking about private stuff about my life and things that I've been through. But there's going to be funny stuff in there, too, right? Like, that's the whole idea is to make a one hour or, or so – uh, length entertaining show for everyone on the internet, right? This is supposed to be entertaining for my fans. This is supposed to be entertaining for my haters, but also for a whole new audience, for those who are neutral and have only heard about me through memes and other hearsay to actually get a full story of who I am. This is supposed to be the way to, to, to know everything about me in one go, the positive and the negative instead of just the negative, which is all you hear on the internet, right? So anyway, um, yeah, I've been... You know, in, in talks and working with Mike Klum 
for months on this, all right? And we've had brainstorming sessions, and we, we've actually met and talked about this stuff. And basically now, you know, we're in the stage where it's time to set stuff in stone, concrete, you know, filming What schedule, a fucking bitch, man. Because I, I already watched this once uh, yesterday, but he's such a fucking bitch. Like, imagine disrespecting somebody so much that you waste so much of their time they gotta fly across the country to meet you and discuss this project that you're gonna work on and then you're like oh you know what uh no i i don't want to do it actually because um I, I i need to be streaming and also i'm very stressed out okay when you gotta consider the majority of the work you know editing filming arranging everything is Mike's part. He was going to take care of this. He was going to pay for everything. All DSP had to do is show up and exist. That's all he had to do. And he couldn't even do that. Okay. So, as you know, a few weeks ago, uh, the story broke on the internet that this was happening. Okay. The story didn't break. Mike announced it. Okay. And, of course, people started asking me. And a couple weeks ago, I told you guys publicly about it. And... <clears throat> the feedback that I got was, let me just put it this way. He's a court jester, he only here for our amusement. Pretty much. At this point, yeah. At this point, yeah. He could have, uh, if he did the documentary, he had some chance of expanding his audience and something might have happened, man. But who fucking knows? Well, he didn't take the chance, you know? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And he didn't take any shots, except, you know, alcohol. Fearful. Okay? That's the feedback I got. Fear. So, so yeah, people uh, messaged him that they were scared about him after what happened with the side-scrollers. So this is, again, he's going to use other people as a reason why he pulled out. Right? It wasn't, whoa, this is great news. It wasn't, oh, this is interesting. It was, well, I'm afraid now. Why? Was the feedback they're idiots. that I got fearful from my audience? Because keep in mind, I get feedback from my audience. I Because they're just as pussy as he is. How many people did Mike reach out to that didn't want to talk to him? They just didn't want to talk. K Styles, you know, Kevin Styles, the dude that runs his mouth in every detractor's replies and calling him losers and no lives and shit like that. He didn't answer. Derek blocked him. I don't think um, anybody else answered the call. So they're all just as pussy as Daddy Pig Roach. I'm absolutely sure that in the hater detractor circles, they were dancing for joy because they're hoping to get any little piece of information about my life Hell yeah. that they can then use for something new for them. Keep in mind that the moment that anything happens involving me, they get content and they make money on it. It, regardless, it doesn't have to have something to happen. You can just be like sitting around making fun of the guy. And have fucking fun with it. That's the cool thing. Even you can go back in like a decade ago. So it's like a field day for them. It feels doesn't really even have to be something new. Because people discover new things about him every single day. Because he's uploaded the last like 20 years of his life on the internet. One form or another. Completely willingly and voluntarily by the way. Piece of information that comes out about this documentary is going to become content for them. So this is great because they don't have to work anymore. They're just going to sit back and they're just going to re relax, and they're going to enjoy, and they're going to revel in it, and they're going to get every moment of it, right? What? And they're hoping, ultimately, that when this documentary comes out, it's going to end up being bad for me, just like the documentary for Boogie. Because, ladies and gentlemen, as much as Boogie probably doesn't want to admit it, that documentary hurt him way more than it helped him. It made him look worse, and more people actually make fun of him now than before. But that's, that's where you're being an idiot, DSP, and that's where you have no self-awareness. Because that was exactly what Boogie was going for. That's exactly what he wanted. And Mike went along with it, and that was the whole narrative of the documentaries, that Boogie is a pathetic piece of shit. It was completely intentional. Which I'm sure was not the intention. I mean, this is why the guy's on the Lol Cow podcast, this is why the guy is exposing himself on Twitch to try to get attention, because he's desperate. He is desperate. That was the whole idea. Okay. That's not good. And certainly that's not the situation that I want to put myself into uh, with this documentary at all. It's the opposite. I'm trying to give myself positive exposure, not 
negative exposure and making people feel bad. So he wanted a marketing campaign. That's what he wanted. And he had a very good chance with having it because he was working with a literal guy who has a marketing company. Or sorry or think I'm pathetic. So yes, I want positive. Uh, what was it? I forgot. Great. Okay, what? that's not good. I want positive exposure. We have the quote, everybody. He just admits straight up he wanted just the fluff piece. And now he might have started realizing that people are hoping that it's not, and it was shaping up to perhaps not be a fluff piece, and he pulled out immediately. Positive exposure, not negative exposure, and making people feel bad or sorry or think I'm pathetic. It's the opposite. You are pathetic. I'm a positive guy, and I persevere through all this stuff that people throw at me. It's a completely different story than Boogie's, right? Uh-huh. <clears throat> but the truth here is... Big ups fellow survivors of the great Catractor Civil <laughs> War of 24. Rip to cap and rich the whale hunter who ended up the only casualty in this one-sided comp. Yeah, yeah, man, pour one out for all the, for all the casualties. <laughs> that people are right. The Detractor the Civil War. <laughs> the thing is, I didn't even see anybody who was like actually genuinely pissed off about this getting canceled. It was more like people that were disappointed were just disappointed. Because I know I'm disappointed. I was curious to see what this was going to shape up to be and what kind of a, a, a life DSP is going to present himself as having. It, but, you know, it didn't happen. So, you know, it kind of sucks. A piece of stuff out there that Mike Klum has done that everyone knows was basically a negative piece about Boogie and made him look bad. So my viewers are like, well, how is that going to help you? If the one example you have of what this guy's done actually kind of hurt Boogie right made him look worse then why on earth would you trust this guy to make a documentary with you and again I'm you know he's contradicted himself surprise surprise because earlier on he said that the boogie documentary was just a look in the life of boogie and that his life is nowhere near as pathetic and desperate as boogie's so if the dsp documentary was uh you know obviously a look into the life of dsp then it would be a positive one. It would be a happy look. It would be a romantic comedy instead of a horror movie. I'm telling you, this is not that kind of a documentary. It's very different, all right? That's why I, I'm into it and all of that. It's not. I would not be doing a documentary that's, oh, sad, it's the sad life of the... There you go. Film. This is what well, I mean. It's not sad, okay? Um, now, also, I know for a fact that m many of you, in fact, a lot of you, all right, are afraid of drama and problems because here's the deal and this is this is what i know today and this is what i've learned over time oh this is such a this is such a stupid segment bro experience as a 41 year old adult i'm well aware that my actions directly affect not just me but the people around me my family and my viewers are directly affected by the decisions that i make in my life and I feel that sadly, there's a lot of times in the last 10 to 15 years that I've been a YouTuber that I was not self-aware enough to know that. Yeah. Um, how about the the restraining order? How about that? Why did we have to bring that up and confuse everybody and make Kat and reveal private stuff about Kat's past that are very hurtful to her? Hmm. And that happened last year, not even a year ago. And therefore, I would say and do things that then get them out of here, negatively affecting everyone around me in a very negative way, right? Like how? Um, you were gonna get people in chat that say gout, gout, gout and insult you personally? And that's my fault. And I put- Or people that call out that you have pedophiles watching you like Derek and Acid Face? Publicly apologize. Yeah, we shouldn't be doing that, I guess. To that's toxic out there. and it's hurtful. Calling, accusing somebody of pedophile when you have proof of it is hurtful and toxic. Who may have been put through drama and not- Don't you think Mike will release anything? Nope. Mike seems too nice, but we should consistently encourage him to release what he can. He cannot let it go to waste. I respect that he respects people's privacy, but this is about justice from manipulation. Lol. Right, well, uh, first of all, I don't think he has anything recorded or filmed because they were in the pre-production stage. Um, I do think he would be open to like a casual conversation about his general experience with DSP. And his idea of what the documentary would look like eventually. You know, his creative vision for the documentary. So maybe that would give you kind of a, the, you know, um, imagine if that happened type of moment.
So I'm looking forward to it. That's why I invited him on TBS. I would like to ask him some stuff about it. I'm sure the other guys do as well. Nonsense because of me. You know, perfect example here, that Side Scrollers podcast. I had already made the decision to not do an interview. I had decided against it. Originally, the idea was I wanted an interview, but then things were going good. And I said, I don't want an interview. I don't need it. Things are going fine. And then all of a sudden, the side scrollers contact me to be on their show. And I said, yeah, I'll just be a guest on. But what I, uh, what I think would happen um, and what I think Mike would want to do is to just carry on with his other projects, you know, because if he dwells on this guy, it's just going to be, uh, I guess, damage to his reputation as well. Because like, why, why would you even give a fuck? The, the project fell apart. You're a professional. You just move on to the next one. But I, I just want a quick Q&A with him to see what his uh, opinion was. Your show, And then they decide they want to turn it into an interview, which wasn't my, the idea and wasn't my intention. But you agreed to it, though, right? But here I am trusting a guy who I've worked with over the years multiple times and never... No, he didn't work with him multiple times over the years. They met, like, twice. And that was it. They never were on any kind of project, right? They never, quote-unquote, work together me over and then he basically decides this is his big opportunity to get over on someone and make a lot of money and get a lot of attention for himself because he and this is a wild narrative that has never been true and I, I assume most of you were around during the time of the interview and you hear the story then and the story now he's a greedy asshole right so i got screwed in that situation and what happened was you guys were negatively affected my wife was negatively affected. My family was negatively affected. Wait, wait, wait. How was your wife negatively affected? By you revealing that, he, that her uh, ex-boyfriend beat her? How the fuck was she negatively affected? Affected. It wasn't just me. Because you cried about, her, uh, about it to her? And that's not good. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Because now he's bringing other people in and making them a part of his own personal issues. And that's a fucking a thing that irritates me a lot. This is about everyone involved. Yes. Okay? And I apologize for that. And so, you know, it's a it's a big step to do a documentary, all right, where a lot of stuff that probably a lot of people don't know, or maybe it's just a lot of stuff people have forgotten because I don't talk about it anymore, is going to come to light. And there's going to be a lot of stuff in one focused area of concentration about me, right? Likely, it's going to dredge up a lot of old shit that no one cares about anymore, but some people will be hearing about it for the first time, so now people will care again, even though it doesn't matter. You know? Here's the thing. This is something that he mentions, I think, more than any other reason why he quit. It's the things from his past that people are going to bring up, and he doesn't want them to bring it up. He wants that to be kept under wraps. Because if people start bringing up the old Phil, the king of hate, and that's their first exposure to Dark Side Phil, they're going to give them a very good perspective of what kind of a person Phil is like. And then it's, it's over, bro. It's over. You've got a, a, detractor, a detractor recruitment area set up right in front of the fucking Snort Fork. You know, <clears throat> basically, I've done a lot of work to improve myself over the last Oh, but yeah, but, uh, that's also a really good point. That's why he made the DSP throwback channel, right? Because he wants the stuff from the past to be kept in the past. Or it's more like we're just cherry-picking stuff from the past and spotlighting them while completely pretending the other ones didn't happen. In years that I became a full-time streamer, I've dropped a lot of personas and monikers and things I used to do because I feel like in the modern day, they're toxic and not positive enough. Uh, also, the other day, literally on Wednesday... Uh, Wednesday night, today is Sunday, he admitted that he has a persona on the streams and off stream he is not the same guy to Cat. So yeah, I guess there's still some personas that he got to drop. Of something that I want to portray to the internet, being that I am a content creator, and to some people, yes, I know how crazy this sounds, but to some people I actually am sort of a role model. And so I don't want to portray myself in that way to oh, those man. people who are looking up to me, right? So I've that's like wild to imagine somebody is looking up to Phil and he's a role model to them. Crazy. I wouldn't even say Jasper should look up to him. God damn. Nobody should look up to this guy. Everybody should look down on him. Done my best piece of shit. to change for the better, but a documentary is going to dredge up those old things and have them be exposed again to an audience who might th feel like they're fresh again, right? <laughs> So
So, with all this going on, all right, there has been work going on behind the scenes on the documentary. All right, there has been. And like I said, now is the time that we're, we're hashing out concretely things like filming schedule, how much work is going to go into it, uh, what it's going to entail to do this because there's going to be filming in the house. There's going to be filming outside of the house, other places as well, you know, professional studio work and stuff like that. It's a big endeavor to put out a professional looking documentary. This is not just a Yeah, but that's also the work that Mike is going to be doing, bro. Don't don't think that you're going to be doing any of it. You're just going to exist and he's going to point a camera at you. Throw together piece. This is not, you know, someone talking And he's acting like he has to be taking time off work to edit it. Over footage of detractor shit that they've accumulated over the last 15 years and acting like that's a documentary. It's not it's not. It's a future generation of kids will be better beggars. You know what? I'm all for that. We should educate the kids how to beg better on the internet. It's a no effort garbage is what that is. Yeah, this we should make like an online course uh, for uh, e-begging for children. This is a real documentary, okay? So, all right. <clears throat> Here's the big update, ladies and gentlemen, I have for all of you. All right? All things considered, everything going on, all right? Uh... As of today, the documentary is canceled. <laughs> this is the face you get. Thanks for the money, Clummy. It's over. Actually, we should look up to Phil. He is the master manipulator, and he makes thousands of dollars in tips because of it. Imagine the investment. Um, disagree. Master manipulator is somebody who can manipulate intelligent people, not retards. He is, matter of fact, a terrible manipulator. That's why he got so many people calling him out and so few people who actually believe his manipulations because he's terrible at it. All right. And I'm going to tell you why. Because there's a few major factors involved in this decision. All right. And it was not an easy decision to make because I've been working on this for months with Mike. And we've been. <laughs> Mike wanted to clum inside, but Phil pulled out. Cuck move. That, 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 that's pretty much it going back and oh forth my god <laughs> and it was a tough i'm about to climb right? but allow me to explain what's actually going on all right okay so now we get into the why i pulled out oh number one to do a documentary like this is going to be incredibly time consuming i'm talking weeks of work likely away from being here and streaming with you guys or insane over exaggeration insane really broken schedules and messed up stuff right so for example entire days of filming that i'm not streaming at all a day where my schedule's way off and i'm doing kind of a half stream and then i'm running around we're talking time uh, days i probably wouldn't even see my wife because what? i'd be so busy right bro get the fuck out of here with this fucking bullshit because it's like you gotta consider Mike is doing like five times more effort than this dude is. And this is the guy who's complaining. And again, because he's not going to be able to sit there and play video games. Not just filming. Even though he already told people when he announced the documentary, he already told people that he would have to take a long time away from streaming at some points whenever they have to record. He already admitted that and that was fine with him. So this point is debunked. Here but also filming, I'm having to travel and go around to do this filming and stuff like that. So just that number one, that's a big endeavor. And by the way, that's not the reason why I'm coming to this decision, but it's a factor in it, okay? Um, so it's one of the reasons. It's not the reasons, but it's one of them. But basically, there's so many other factors going on. Some of these you guys know and some of you don't. Like, for example, I've got personal stuff going on behind the scenes in my life that none of you have any idea about. Uh, then shut the fuck up about it. I got them too. Over the last two, three years since I made this channel, a lot of personal stuff had happened to me. I don't talk about it because people are not here to fucking listen about it. Fucking idiot. All right. You just but this is, um, as you guys know, Philip, this is what I call drama foreshadowing. So this is the setup for future drama. So you can know at any point that he might come someday and be super stressed out and take it out on his stream. On his stream chat, more like, and beg them for money again. And I'm thinking it might be, uh, it might be taxes this time around. Because why not? Just don't. Because I don't share 
a lot of my personal stuff with you guys. You, as you know, over the last year, there's been a few t days where I've told you guys things are going on. I'm just, I'm not in the right mindset or I'm not feeling well because of stuff. And that stuff's ongoing. So already, I'm kind of already at a limit of kind of stress in my life right now with that stuff going on. Um, and that really sucks. No, I'm not going to do the react today. I'm, uh, I'm clocking out after TBS. I wasn't even sure I was going to make this stream today because I had a lot of work to do for yesterday, but yesterday I was with family, so I couldn't do it. And then this motherfucker cancels the documentary. So I had to rush to get it done in time and I managed to do it, dude. I got up early this morning and I did all my work because I'm a very, um, uh, active little boy. All right. And... Let me, let me also put it this way, okay? <clears throat> In order for this documentary to work, it would need to be even-sided, right? So you need to have an equal level of good and bad, balanced. What's happened is, since the word of the documentary hit the internet, there's 98% of the interest is the toxic negative. Yep. Everyone who hates... Because that's all you got to offer, Phil. Nobody gives a fuck about you playing video games and your business degree and you growing up in a Catholic school, except the haters, because we want to get any kind of bit of lore that we can gossip about, because it's it's pretty fucking funny most of the time. Hates me, wants to be a part of this thing or have input. I have the feeling that Sundar stole Phil's personal info and is causing him to be extremely stressed out. Pick ups to the greatest <laughs> scammer in detractor history. You are forgiven, Sir Sundar. Look, if, if Sundar did anything, I definitely didn't tell him. And if you accuse me of telling him to do something, you would have no proof. Because I have concealed all of it. In it, so they can slam me and make me look terrible, just like they do on a daily basis for personal can slam him. YouTube. Hit him with a fucking spine buster. Hit him with a pedigree. An F5. A stinger splash. Oh, he loves the stinger splash. Again, if you want to get that reference, go watch the champions, uh, the WWE Supercard stream on WPIG. Right? So that's where the interest lies. My viewers and my fans and those who actually like me have reached out to me over the last several weeks. And some of you, I want to appreciate every one of you who reached out. Oh, my to me God. Feelings about this. All right. I had people who I haven't heard from in years reach out to me. And say, don't do this documentary. <laughs> that basically, this is not going to work. That it's just going to end up being a field day for people to bring up old shit that I've grown out of. But act like it just happened. Right? And there's other people also who basically are like, you know, I'd like to be a part of this. Like, I'd like to, to, to support you as a fan. But how could we viably do that? Um, the same way that I was going to be doing that. You know, we have a Discord call. And I talk to him, and then that's it. You don't have to be filmed in person. What do you think? Look, do you think Mike Klum is going to fly to Canada to interview Derek? Of course not. And, I mean, you're talking about, like, for Like most of us that he talked to, if we're featured in the documentary, it was going to be a fucking Discord call or a Zoom call or something. For example, let's say we wanted to have a fan of mine be a part of this documentary. This, what he's about to say, is very misleading and just straight up wrong. But I guess it makes his uh, already weak narrative a little bit stronger in his mind, so that's why he's saying it. Well, you don't want to give up their identity because trolls actually harass my fans if they can. Yeah, and I don't think Mike was going to give anybody's identity out. They've doxxed them. They've messed with their personal lives. So what are we going to do? Like create an identity protection situation where we have to black their face out and voice change them? Uh, that assumes that you're going to have it in person. You don't need to do that on Discord because you can just have their voice out there. Can you dox somebody based on their voice? How, how, how does this even work, man? This makes no sense. And film them in a... He's just spreading like paranoia to make you more, more concerned about him and make this point that makes no sense make some kind of sense to you. Dark room and just to have a fan of mine talk positively about me, right? No, they, but... they weren't going to do that. Like how crazy is that when you really think about it? And, you know, I want to say thank you because, again, there were a few people who I was working with to get, basically be kind of those people. Yeah, he was grooming people to talk, uh, to say good stuff about him in a documentary. That's how objective they are. And I appreciate that. They were talking about it. He was preparing them for, like, a public event.
so they could say something positive about him. That's some great fans. People did step up and said they actually would do it. But do I really want to put people through that? Because again, what you guys got to understand here is this is not just about me anymore. But if I were younger, if this- Yeah, were... it actually is. And that's a, a overarching narrative in the DSP lifespan and his existence is that he tries to extend his responsibility and the consequences of his responsibility to everybody else. He's like, I make this analogy before, he's like a guy that's alone in a boat in the middle of the ocean, and he's looking at a, a ship in the distance and trying to convince them that they're also in his boat because his boat is fucking sinking and he needs somebody to help him. But they're objectively not in his boat. He is the one who has everything to lose. Derek has nothing to lose. Jade has nothing to lose. Canadian fucking Kirk has nothing to lose. But DSP is trying to convince them that they're all in this together, even though they're objectively not. Back in Connecticut, in my condo in Connecticut, and the documentary was being made about me, it's just about me. Who cares, right? But now I'm older, I'm more mature, and I realize that this affects everyone. No, it doesn't. Not just me. So I, uh, my concern here is listening to all of your feedback. Here's the feedback that generally I've gotten from you guys in the last two weeks since basically this was announced, right? Since the side-scrollers interview, so much drama happened. You know, first there was the fallout from that interview and literally three or four months where those guys ragged on me, did constant streams about me, stuttering Craig, wanted to come on my content. You know, bullshit. All yeah, and it, it made you butt hurt. It was really corny, like the whole monetize the haters, and I told him personally when he was on TBS, I told him it was corny and it made the video really hard to watch. Uh, but it, it rubbed DSP the wrong way, it pissed him the fuck off, so it was very funny. All nonsense just to make money. And then finally they shut the fuck up, but then Keemstar interjected himself because he now wanted to get popularity with this lolcow podcast bullshit, and then he persisted for months and months with that, and then finally now... We're at a time and a level where the air is clearing and the things are calm and there's nothing really going on in the drama sphere at all and people are actually just enjoying coming by and being a part of my content and not having to hear about this nonsense and that nonsense and this nonsense and that nonsense. Now here's the th Yeah, now we hear about Argentina and before that, what was it last week? There was something literally every fucking week. Like this, this year started off like wild crazy. Thing. Oh yeah, last week was literally Cat. He brought up Cat on stream and everybody was like, oh, damn. Everybody was like, damn. That's, that's the, uh, just the collective damn. There's always going to be have some no nonsense. Sympathy. Right now with these trolls and the stupid false gifted memberships and all that. There will always be a level of that. But the thing is, there's some things you can ignore and there's some things you can't really ignore or can't control. The whole nonsense with the fake memberships is easily controllable. You ignore it, you ban the person, you move on. But if you've got every person on the internet talking again about me in a negative drama way, it's going to affect everyone again, right? And right now we're in a situation where... I uh, it, it almost makes it seem like it's, it's quote-unquote affecting them because DSP is telling them that they're affected. It's, it's, again, it's a game of telephone. His entire relationship with his community is him telling them something. And then they repeat it back to him to validate what he said. And it's over and over and over again. I'm really stressed out already. I'm also incredibly busy. You know, not only am I running DSP Gaming, but now I got this new project with DSP Throwback that was where you just upload the video that somebody else does the whole work for. It was already in the works and going, right? And okay. now that's, that's hitting full swing with its first stream and everything. And I got to be focusing somewhat on that. I'm still maintaining the react show every week once a week and i'm trying to find new content for that in fact we need to start how is how is he trying to find new content for that people send him the content talking about the super bowl event tomorrow to start planning it um <clears throat> and then on top of all of that my wife has finally made the decision to come back into my content and okay how does that make you busy Having her on a stream once every, like, two weeks. Cat now is with... Like, all of these excuses are so bad. ...here on two streams, which have been awesome. And now we're trying to plan out the content... None of this makes sense. Just say you don't want to do it, bro. You Just say you don't want to do it. Just say you're nervous. Just say you're scared because it's going to bring you more trolls than fans. Just say that you don't want to do it because it's not going to make you money. 
Just be fucking honest for once. What the fuck are these excuses? Gameplay and commentary with me. And that's a lot of work too to figure that all out. How is it a lot of work to figure out what video game you're gonna play with your wife? How is this a lot of work? Just listen to this. Listen to this. This is such bullshit. Right? <clears throat> so, it's kind of This is literally me when I was a kid. And my friends would ask me to go out. And I would just feel like I didn't want to go out. But instead of telling him I don't want to go out, I would tell him any excuse in the book. Anything. But except he's not a kid. He's 41 years old. Kind of like, we got all this stuff going on already. And now it's like, oh yeah, by the way, now we got a plan to have all this time away from work so I could film and I right. can do this and I got to travel to do this and that. And then on top of all of that, just so you guys know, there is one other factor that just happened. Yeah, this is the secret drama that one day is going to be uh, announced. It's either health related or it's money related. That's, that's basically it. But even if it's health related, it's still going to be money related because everything to him is money related this week and i'm not going to tell you guys about it right now maybe eventually I because he doesn't have any by the way i would bring it up but i'm not going to right now but there was another huge determining factor that just happened and i think that's very scummy also talking about really terrible things happening to you in real life and people should be concerned about you and your safety and your health they don't even know what to be concerned about complain about doing things for money when that's literally what he does every single day zero self-awareness literally literally and his reacts whenever he reacted to somebody else's documentary about their downfall the prime motivator was money and views he used that for content just like everybody else because that's the thing with him that that is really annoys me is that he likes to make fun of people just as much as his trolls. He likes to hate watch stuff just as much as his trolls. And you can see that in any time you clock into a DSP react, you can see that. But he just like is in denial about it. He doesn't want to admit it because again, he's trying too hard to make himself look like a good person on the internet Every and it's failing. Excuse is something that was known to him for months prior to him saying yes to Klum. The huge determining factor is Sundar. <laughs> he would not have brought the Orc or Hail onto stream without the Dor Rainbows, Terry being known. Wait, what? Uh, I, I'm, I'm lost for the second part of this message. Hold on. But uh, the, the first part is very true. Everything he just said was something that would known to him ahead of time, and he had to consider before committing himself to this whole thing. And that was... But now this is the thing. Now listen to this. Basically the straw that broke the camel's back, as they say. And I was like, I just can't do this. And now this thing that just happened, you see? So it happens super coincidentally out of nowhere. Something bad happened to him. And it was the last thing that was missing for the documentary to completely collapse into a pile of gout and fat. All right. So just to make this official, all right, it is canceled. It's not, oh, it's delayed or whatever. The documentary is canceled, all right? Now, I'm not saying... That I wouldn't do something like this again or consider Look doing at this it. dude. He's such a bitch. Who would want to work with him ever again? After he's so fucking unprofessional to this dude that flew across the country to eat food with him and his wife. But now he's trying to keep the door open and be like, yeah, I, I might want to do it someday, you guys. So I don't know. Just wait for me to be ready. It again. What is he a fucking prom queen? What a fucking diva. 41 year old man. In the future. I'm saying right now, this is not the time, the climate, or the level of stress to really be taking on a project like this, okay? It's not. Definitely. Because, like, uh, you know, you can think about this anyways, but this documentary had a very good chance to improve his life in a variety of ways. He would get a quick boost in popularity immediately after it happened. All the big streamers would be checking it out because they like watching the Boogie documentary. They would, by extension, expose DSP to their fans. So even if he got more detractors than fans, he would still get a shit ton of traffic for the first few weeks. And that would be worth it. Or at least taking that chance, you know? Giving it the effort in, in trying it out would have been worth it. But now we'll never know. And he is the one who loses the most out of this. I would have just lost on laughing at some fucking DSP weirdness. This could change, maybe, right? In the future, perhaps. If things get better, if, you know... Because I was fully, level... uh, like I, I've talked about on the podcast as well, I fully thought that Mike and Phil would definitely approach this from a point where 
it shows the redemption story of DSP instead of how much of a toxic piece of shit he is. And even if he ends up looking like a toxic piece of shit, it would kind of end on a positive note that he embraces what he is and this and that. And it would be somewhat convincing to your regular viewer. Lowers if my time frees up a little bit more, right? But basically, I'm in a situation... Here, here's the, the truth of the matter here, is that this is a big gamble. Think of it this way. Let's say that I did this documentary, right? And it went really well. All of a sudden, there's a fair, balanced way to look at me. And all of a sudden, a bunch of new people are exposed to my content. And they come over to the channel. And our community grows. Right. It's better for the business and for everything. That could happen, right? It could. But the thing is, it could. It's not a guarantee. But, like, oh, dude. Which fucking business always plays it safe and, and expects to succeed. When you run a business, you got to take some fucking risks sometime, bruh. You got to take some risks. It could very well go the this other This dude always looks for, like, whatever is the safest way to go, whatever is the most obvious and low-effort thing. And by judging the way that him and Cat were interacting in their answers, they're both like that. They got a cat because it's easy to take care of a cat. They like food that is easy to, wa to, to eat. They like TV shows that are easy to watch. They like video games that are easy to play. Just everything easy, bro. Zero risk. Way. Zero risk, all the reward. Please. It could go the other way that I do this documentary, and again, some of these old things, things about my past that are not But, but then again, then again, this is the level one podcast. Like, what do you expect? Level one has no risk. Anymore, but you're talking about... You know, things from my Street Fighter days, things from my early days of YouTube. Shit that doesn't apply to me in 2024. Again, you can see this the second time he mentions it, maybe even the third one. People finding people from his past. Namely, I'm thinking Jaha, because Jaha, I know for a fact, is in contact with Mike. And maybe there's other people that I don't know. But he's definitely terrified of people digging up stuff about his past and making him look bad. But things that people are only just hearing about for the very first time. And now they become an emphasis for certain people. And now people, oh, that's that guy who did that 20 years ago, right? There you go. So if you ask me if I had to pick one of, one of the reasons why he's canceling is, is he is terrified of the past being brought up. So that, and that could be really bad for us all, right? That could be really bad for us all. You see this fucking cult piece of shit? You see this? You see this? No, it's bad for you. It's bad for you. It could put us in a worse light as a community. It could put us. Bro, you are harboring pedophiles. Literal. Degenerates. Losers. Outcasts. That's your community. Not just me, but it could put us in a worse light as a community. Together. That's him. And that is a risk that right now I'm not willing to take. That my sins of the past are somehow going to rub off on Crazy. us in and make us all <laughs> be treated like dirt. Right? Make us all be treated like dirt. You're going to be exiled from your village for being a DSP fan. You see this? He can't take personal responsibility, not even for his past. Now his past is going to make you look bad. Go figure out how the fuck that's going to happen. And there is also one other thing. All right. I feel like this documentary, because I told you guys this when I started talking about it a couple weeks ago. I said this documentary would be the one. And what I meant about that is that this would be the one thing I do. That if I did this documentary, this would be it. I'm not going to do a second documentary in five more years. I'm not going to do a ton more interviews and all this shit. This is it. So this is like with side scrollers, not even a year ago, but this time for realsies. This is the one big project, right? That's going to encompass all of me, my history, who I am yesterday, today, how I've evolved and all of that, right? All together. And I'm not sure that we're at the point that we're ready for that yet. Like I've said, I'm 41 years old, but I'm not going anywhere. Unlike all these other YouTubers who are all of a sudden... <laughs> oh, this... Oh, man, this segment is so bad. It's such a fucking toxic as shit segment. Listen to this. ...have decided together that they want to not do YouTube anymore. Oh, I can't take it anymore. The stress and all these years of doing it.
I assure you, he hasn't seen a single one of those videos, but that's what he saw on Twitter as a summary of those videos, and he's using that narrative to his advantage. I, I gotta quit. No, you're quitting because you're rich. You're quitting because literally you're filthy rich. You hit the algorithm Okay, right, good. You got lucky. Then you rode the wave with your thumbnails and your clickbait titles, and you put out your content for 10 years or whatever. Wow. This is, look at this dude, he's completely disregarding and dismissing any kind of skill, effort, talent, and passion that any of those people had. He's blaming it exclusively on just playing the system. That's what he's blaming it on. And also, what's wrong with quitting your job when you're rich? Don't you have a job to make money? Yeah, sure, you can use it to, to make connections and to, to de develop your skills. But at one point, if you feel like you're wealthy enough to just quit your job and relax and enjoy the rest of your life, why the fuck wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you do it? You got filthy rich doing it the way everyone does it, and now you're quitting because you don't need to work anymore. Yeah. Hell yeah. Power to them. What do you want them to do? Do fucking videos that they hate doing? That's what's And they don't even need the money? Going on. I mean, it's, it's a very simple explanation for why so many YouTubers are quitting. That's, by the way, Kat's... All, if you go to the last Kat Q&A, that's also her, her answer. You can see they share one single brain with, like, four brain cells in total. Alert. That's why every modern movie, game, and TV show suck. All those companies just want to play it safe. It's rare we get something that isn't one of those. Well, whenever we get it, it's usually coming from the indies, and then everybody does it because... The, the indies are the ones who take the risk, they develop the idea, and then the AAA take it and inject a bunch of money in it. Or some kind of a recognizable IP. Alert. Need a few more years of mediocrity before the doc. Well, maybe a few more years of drama and uh, mental decay. Because imagine how he's, this dude, as unhinged as he is in 2024, imagine him in 2030. He's just gonna be like a, he's gonna be like Gollum. He's barely going to be putting together a coherent sentence. Now guys, before you drink the Kool-Aid, please go buy some, prepare it and don't forget to add poison dudes. Yeah, that, well, you don't call it the poison, you call it the, the secret Italian sauce or something. Because if you say poison, some of those people might actually, might actually catch up to what's actually happening. They, they might decide to quit. And it's not, Come on, oh, dude. the YouTube exodus, people don't like working on YouTube. It's because these people are rich and don't have to work anymore. Yeah, good. Right? They already made good it for big. them. Now. And I'm sure they set themselves up for some passive income, too. They maybe invested in real estate or they set up some kind of a, of a scenario for them to quit and still make money off of it. That's fucking good. That's what you're supposed to do. You can judge for yourself whether or not these people have a level of passion for their work or not. Personally, for me. Oh I yeah! Now he just shat on all of them, and now you can, now he says you can judge for yourself. That's not how this works. I've told you guys, if I hit the lotto today, and I became a multimillionaire, and I didn't have to work a day in my life, I would still stream. And he's saying this because there is absolutely zero percent of him hitting the lotto. So he wants to convince himself of how good of a, a content creator, how dedicated and passionate he is, because there's no chance that this is gonna happen. Now, I wouldn't stream the capacity that I do now. I'm not going to stream six days a week full time. Come on. But I love this so much because I have passion for it. I love what I do, and I love having interactions with you guys. I would keep doing it in some capacity, right? And there you go with YouTubers who, oh, well, now we're in a situation we don't have to work anymore. I quit. Yeah, good well, for them. I'm not like them. Well, yeah, you're not. We can tell. Because I you know, because you're dependent. Because if uh, if only iced coffee is gone for a week, doesn't wail out on you, you have severe chances to not pay your bills on time. That's actually a chance. You're definitely not like them on any level. First of all, I'm never going to make it big. I'm never going to become a multimillionaire doing this. Yeah, you could have been, but you cucked yourself out of this because you were too stubborn of a piece of shit. Okay. Because he spent like 15 years... Uh, with his uh, with his fingers in his ears, telling people that he runs a successful business and he got a business degree, and then, fifteen years later, he took the fingers out of his ears, and now he's pretending to be super receptive to feedback. Well, it's a little too late, buddy. You're over. It's over. Shut it down. The only people that really actually care about him are the trolls. And I'm not going to. I'm too small time. And I'm too stuck in my own mindset of how to do stuff. I refuse to do all those things that all of them did to get rich.
I don't do any of those things. I'm not going to do those fucking things ever. Okay. Um, that's why I'm different, but, oh, so you're different cause you're worse. Um, yeah, that, that is true. That's also why I'm kind of going to be at this level likely for the rest of my life. Right. Um, what? So if I'm going to do a document, so just straight up saying that he's going to be on level one for the rest of his life. Cause he's, he's, he's too good of a person. He's better than everybody. That's why he's going to spend the rest of his life on the bottom. Okay, Phil, that's perfectly fine with me. I'm very comfortable with uh, where you are in your life. Mentory. I want to do it when I feel like it's time <laughs> to tell my whole story. But I don't think my whole story's oh, happened yet. I think my story is still happening right now. And we'll yeah, I, th I think you might be dead by the time that comes, dude. I think you might just stroke out someday. It happened. And somebody else is going to end up making the documentary. And DSP is not even going to be there to get the benefit could have just done it now man it was all in your hands and there was a high chance that it was actually gonna make you look good because mike's whole job is to make companies look good what a fucking idiot been and evolve positively right now like i said not only am i maintaining a gaming channel but i got a react channel and wow now I got a throwback channel wow and this is gonna be a fun year of kind of doing stuff on those and crazy around and having he cucks himself out of success a good time with all of it's it. amazing this is a great year for games like right now, we've got a bunch of great games uh, coming out that I'm very happy to be playing and everything. So I'm not ready to say this is my story and here it is and I'm done with it now. Like I, I feel like maybe down the road, right? That's something to consider. But I don't think sure, that now yeah, is the yeah. time at all. Of course. I feel like the the right decision here is because there's nothing toxic and negative really going on right now. Because we're all having a good time. We're about to start new releases. We're about to start time. Basically, the consensus right now is, no, definitely don't think about this right now. You know, don't do it right now. <laughs> Me, again, you this know. This dude sucks so whatever, bad, but, man. I cannot believe. I cannot believe denying yourself any kind of success in life. Because this is, he's so far up his own ass. He doesn't even see any kind of possibility to, to actually develop. To get off of this damn level one. But I'm perfectly fine with this. I'm fine with that. And that's why he's such an interesting lol cow. Unlike even Wings in Boogie, who can actually see when people are giving him an opportunity and take advantage of it and get to even level 1.5. It's still something. It's still seeing that that guy wants to do something in his life. This dude, defiant. Defiant snort. Basically, don't do it now because this is going to be a second side scrollers now here's the thing i don't believe that i don't believe that this documentary is going to be a second side scrollers because this then is do it. a hit piece on me right but at the same time i'm totally understanding where people are coming from where they're saying it's gonna primarily be a lot of drama for a lot of people you know what i'm saying like tons of drama okay and no one wants that level of so drama. so basically let me get this trade. The trolls run his life? Because now he understands that the trolls are going to get a lot of content out of it and enjoy it. So he's pulling out of the thing that could benefit him and potentially even change his life, if successful. So, yeah. Yeah. Basically, the trolls are running his life. Nice to get a confirmation of that. People just want me to be happy and to put out good content that they enjoy. And that's what but my true fans uh -huh. who are supportive of me, who come by every day and support my content, no matter what it is I'm doing, what it is I'm playing, what project I'm working on, what channel I'm on, those people aren't seeking more drama, right? And this, no matter what, this documentary was going to cause drama. And so I think this is the right decision. Everything you do is going to cause drama because you've built a following and a career off of stirring up drama getting involved in drama, commenting on other people's drama, making yourself look good because somebody else is being a part of a drama, like with pro Jared. So yes, allow me to tell you this, Phil. You're all about the fucking drama. For now. And again, maybe in the future, I would change my mind, but for right now, it is canceled. It's not postponed. It's not on the back burner. It's canceled. I'm not doing it, all right? But maybe that would change in a while, Dependent on the climate, depending on how things look. The climate. Right? Who knows how things change at, over time? Who would have thought 
that today I'd be doing this. Like what? Five, six years ago, I never would have thought that I'd be doing what I'm doing today. Like and what? It, begging and playing video games? Exactly the same thing you did five, six years ago? Sure thing, man. But now he has more channels to beg on. That's that's the evolution. And five years before. Wow, who would have who would have thought I would be doing the same thing I did five years ago, dude? Oh well, well actually, I I could have. That I probably wouldn't have thought I would have been in that situation. You know, my life changes a lot. So, that's my feeling on it, all right? And by the way, yeah, the schedule's not updated. I didn't update it. I'll have to update it. I keep forgetting to do that. Oh, by the way, uh, yeah, also another derailment. They fucked up his haircut again. Look at this fade. This time, they're not even trying to fade it. They just, just fucked it up. Why would they do that? I'll do it. They tried to give him, like, a trendy haircut to a 40-year-old balding man with the worst hairstyle you've ever seen. And this is what happens. It when I'm done saying what I have to say. No, just give him like a normal trim. The only reason he isn't the soul of a multi-million dollar company is cause he's better than everyone else. He says this as he sniffs his own farts. Yeah, he would have been the CEO if he had clickbait thumbnails, even though he did. Um, yeah, go figure. Hey, about this. Big up, uh, Cope Side Phil. It's wrong. Um, to those who actually stepped up and were going to help with this project, because I, like I said, I was talking with a few people about being a part of the project on the positive side of things. Uh huh. He was he was making his own hate army, uh, or get, uh, you can say love army, that we're gonna just stand up to the trolls and make them look good. This shit is crazy. <laughs> he was grooming people to show up and make them look good in the interview, but I guess Derek wasn't invited. Cause yeah, uh, no, he's not. They were very willing to help. Even at great personal risk of being what great personal risk being harassed as a, as you know because they were going to participate in it, bro. Somebody's gonna call him a retard on Twitter. That's the personal risk. I also want to thank Mike Clum. I want you guys to understand something. Mike has been absolutely, positively nothing but professional. Yeah, bro. If that was me, I'm I'm going on blast on this guy. If he made me go fucking cr travel across the country and wasted, I assume, more than 25 hours of my time to work on the fucking project that he's gonna bitch out of because he didn't think it through, I'm putting this dude on blast. At all, in this whole situation. And I'm straight up telling everybody to never work with him again. That's what I would do. But Mike is too much of a professional to do that. I respect him for that. He's been 100% professional. This decision has nothing to do with him whatsoever. Zero. This is my personal decision based on my life situation and my things going on. Nothing to do with him. He's been completely accommodating. 100%. He's listened to every concern I ever had. And also, if I was Mike, I would do a documentary about the documentary. Kind of like a meta thing. A documentary about how it was, like, talking to DSP and, like, going there and what he wanted to do in the documentary. So at least I would invest something that I learned about during the course of preparing for this into something you know you get to make something out of your experience and this was going to be and of course they probably wouldn't have footage it would be like 20 minutes long but at least you're answering the questions that people have for you something that was going to be safe right this is not going to be a team storms into my house with cameras starts filming and just slaps it all over the internet and now next thing you know everyone's harassing me and my family because all my shit's on the internet that's not what this is going to be all right you i want everyone to understand that um, and hopefully he'll be able to, to, to make quality stuff. I, from what I understand, he is working on other stuff that's going to be good. I wish, I wish him the best in the future. Um, but it's just not for me right now. I know for me and my family as well, because again, it's not just me. It's not for me. It's not for my family and it's not for my community right now. All right. It's just not the right time. Fair enough. It's not the right time. You should have thought this through before, dude. Like, what was it? When did Mike announce it? Like, a couple of weeks ago? Okay. You had plenty of time to think about it in advance, dude, before it was even announced. Because they had multiple, like, Zoom meetings before it was even announced. But no. We gotta make that guy waste all the time and the money to travel and take care of all the other stuff and waste his time hyping it up and asking people on Kiwi Farms and doing interviews with them. And then we're just going to pull out. That's how it works. Because it's going to make us look bad. Fair enough. That's the announcement. So I'm sure you guys are all going to have questions. Just to, to warn you all. Yeah, why are you such a bitch? Questions and shit, I'm not going to answer it. What is, what is a personal question? What did you have for dinner? All right. But if you guys have general questions about the situation, I'm willing to talk about it. So let's get into that. First of all, let's get to shout outs here. Give so... 
Let's take a look at what people had to say. We got contributions coming in. Very nice. That's what we want to hear about. By the way, as you can notice, the uh, members total is gone because they don't exist now because people realize how to cheese them and effectively make it kind of it kind of make it so DSP doesn't make any money off of members. And I'm sure they're probably going to try and do it on the other channels as well, especially today on the DSP Reacts channel. And if they if they manage to cuck him in that specific way, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be interesting. Well, August because he August is he is seething super hard about it because he realized he has nothing to do to counteract it. He cannot stop it. He cannot prevent it. He can't get help from YouTube because nothing really illegal is happening. No exploits are being used. Nobody is cheating. They're just using the platform in a slightly different way from a different location. Ten dollar tip. And so he's completely powerless. And the whole thing about this is he tries to conceal the fact that he's completely powerless by pretending that it doesn't get to him and that it's not a problem and that he could easily ignore it. But it just, it, it's it's not like that. It just doesn't work. Oh, the documentary is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Well, oops. Sorry about that, August, because the documentary is not happening. It's not okay. happening. <laughs> Okay. I don't think the, the animation just worked. And I'm wondering that's because I changed my animation. So hold on. If I click this, nothing. I, I changed my animations, and now none of them are working. So I went from everything working to nothing working. So give me a second here to figure this out. Filter events. Oh. Oh, I don't, have it, I don't have it set up. No wonder. I misclicked here. Okay, now it should work. Let me fix this. I screwed it up. It's my fault. Here we go. Okay, so now it should work. Let me save. What a great stream. Anyway, so you know, $10 tip. But oops. The documentary is actually not happening. But I appreciate your enthusiasm for it. And you're trusting me that it would be good if it did happen. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I got a $5 tip, also from August, who says, well, now I'm disappointed. Well, I'm sorry, August. <laughs> so he went from euphoria to disappointment in a matter of moments. Thank you, August, for the $5 tip. I'm sorry about that. Okay. All right, moving on. I have $2 for the tip. Okay. Do we have something else? I don't think there is. Ass man did a tip, and basically, I'm just going to say this. I'm not going to read what he said because Why there's not? no point in reading the whole thing. Because you're going to misrepresent him. It doesn't matter what I do. My trolls say it's a negative. If I went forward with the documentary, well, that's a negative. No, I think that's a positive for us. Well, if I cancel the documentary, that's a negative. If I have input in the documentary, that's a negative. That is a negative, I think, if he has input in it. He shouldn't. The documentary should be whatever Mike decides to make it. If I have no input in a documentary, that's also a negative. It doesn't matter if I fart or breathe or whatever I do, it's a negative. I don't give two shits what trolls say. He doesn't give two shits what trolls say, but he pulled out of the documentary because of the trolls. That was one of the factor is that there's going to be a lot of toxicity that's going to hurt us. That's it. That's it. He, that's the only reason he's not doing it is for the trolls because he's afraid that he's going to get more trolls than fans and it's just not going to be immediate success. Literally, the trolls run his stream and his life and he pretends like he doesn't care about him. And the fact that you Crazy. care about what the trolls say means that you need to also reassess who you are and what you think about. You need to reassess who you are and what you think about. That, that's a wild statement coming out from Dark Side fucking Phil. Dark Side Phil. Because in life, if you give two shits about what a hater says, you're just wasting your time. Like, Oh, I agree. But you're not the one to say it, though. Because uh, everything you do shows that you deeply, deeply care about what the trolls say. Because it's fucking right. This is not legit criticism. It's just nonsensical shit that they say, you know? Oh, a nice uh, quick ear pick and wipe in the jammies. So I don't care. He thought I didn't see it, but I did. If they're happy or upset that I am or not doing a documentary, they can get fucked. Okay. Oops, that's a nice Excuse one. Excuse me. Nah, you're not excused. Oh. Yeah, the old pick and wipe. <laughs> It's like the pick and roll in basketball. It's a pick and wipe. It's a it's a very basic play, but it works. <laughs> Slurpee, uh, Slurpee tipped two dollars. I'm gonna read what Slurpee said, but this I I don't know too much about this. Are you ready for this? Good idea to cancel. Seattle has one of the highest human trafficking rates in the nation. I always felt the documentary was a gateway to a dark underworld you don't want to be involved in. What? I mean, imagine if this dude got human traffic, bro. It's like... <laughs> you would think... Uh, uh, up until he was sold into slavery in, like, South Africa, he would think it, it's Tevin who kidnapped him. 
but then one day he would just wake up in like a South African, like a, a slave farm, and he would be like, oh, I, was, I guess it wasn't my trolls. That's a new one. <laughs> I never thought of this documentary about Dark Side Phil as a gateway into human trafficking, but maybe I should have considered that in my decision too. I don't know. No, I don't think it would be very useful. Not even for like organ harvesting. Half his organs are fucked up. What are you gonna take? His liver? No, that that shit is finished. What are you gonna take? Like what? You're gonna extract the gout from his uh, snort sacks? I don't think gout goes uh, goes for a lot on the market. I don't think uric acid is in high demand right now. I need to check, though. I need to check my dark web. Anyway, thanks for the $2 tip. <clears throat> Don't know what the hell you're talking about, but okay there. <laughs> wow. Alrighty then. I think, uh, I think Slurpee was following a different documentary is what it was. I'm pretty sure Slurpee was not actually paying attention to anything that I said. Anyway... Uh, let's see here. And notice how right in the end, he just made the guy look bad by telling him he wasn't paying attention in class. Yeah, you ain't paying attention to anything I said. Yeah, but you took his fucking money, didn't you? Bitch boy. Oh, my nose. Ah. Let's see here. I gotta refresh everything. I received a super chat from Fabrizio. Okay, thank you, Fabrizio, for a $2 super chat. Let's get that on the leaderboard. You're actually the first super chatter of the day. Okay. And so far, it looks like that's what we got. I think I shouted everything out. Oh, something wasn't loading here. There we go. But I think I got everything as of now. I think I got everything, so... Also, shout out to Apollo. Apollo re-upped his membership, and he says, I respect your decision. Uh, maybe in the future. Perhaps. No, no it's Again, not happening, bro. It's over. This is not. It is canceled. It's over. In the future, he's going to get even more erratic, even more paranoid, even more, you know, cognitive decline. It's not happening, bro. Now was his chance. And... I think some people got quite nervous about the documentary, or at least that's my takeaway from reading some of the posts on, like, Kiwi Farms, Reddit, and so on, because Mike seems like a guy who could make DSP look good to some extent. Not to us that actually know what DSP is about, but to the normies that don't know anything about him. And that was his one chance. I don't think he's ever going to get a, a shot like this ever again. And that's, it's only a negative for him. I guess it's negative for us because we didn't get to see what the, the documentary would actually be. And I was very curious about it. But I, I can live with it, you know? I'll live with it. Unlike Rich, who really, really wanted to be in that documentary, man. He was horny for it. Definitively, <laughs> the product is canceled. But this is not, oh, I'll never, ever do anything like this. It's just, I don't feel like this is my swan song. Like, right? Like, I think, like, this documentary... Is supposed to be like the swan song like why you know giving someone their flowers or whatever for for doing content and here's your history the good and bad but i'm in the midst of me doing it i'm not but imagine imagine if he dies and then somebody makes a documentary on him and then all the people that are going to benefit from this is the trolls not not even him not even cat Quitting. Oh, now was the one chance. You get to make it and you get to ride on that wave, man. You get to ride the wave of positivity. But he's never going to get that sh shot again. I guess the consolation prize is the June the King documentary, but that shit is, like, really boring. It's not going to make him look good, I think. Uh, but at least it's going to be an interesting watch. We got that to hold on to. Not retiring. This is not a, you know, nothing's going crazy. He's going on in that regard, so... This is probably not the time to start causing drama around this documentary, right? And again, I've got a lot of shit going on in my life already where I'm already stressed out and I got anxiety about shit. And it's like, do I really need to be doing this at the same time? It's probably a very bad idea, right? <clears throat> and so I don't want to have anything to do with that. Um, <clears throat> so there you go. Okay, um... Oh, uh, is this all? I think it might be. Okay. What's this? What is this?
So here we go again. Pimple shits with a tip talking about detractors. I already Pimple said I don't give a fuck shits. what shit them say. And I don't give a fuck about anyone's opinion. I don't give a fuck about anyone's opinion. Cancels the documentary because detractors are going to make it toxic and people are going to believe them. But my direct fans... And that's who I listen to. And that's uh -huh. one of the major reasons. And why. yes, his direct fans told him that the detractors are going to make it toxic. And that's why he pulled out. There we go. Yeah, sure. Right, Phil. I made this decision. He is so <clears> pissed the off. The overwhelming amount of feedback I was getting from my community was not to do this. That, listen, things have died down. No one cares about side scrollers anymore. Fucking stupid lol cow podcast. No one's paying attention to that anymore. This is great now that... We're at a period where now we can focus on all these great new games that are going to be coming out. You got really? other efforts going on with the throwback really? channel. Your wife is back in your content, which is super awesome and positive. Who fucking said this, dude? This is like the fakest shit anybody would say. Dude, your wife is back in your content. That's super awesome and positive. Why, why now? Am I? This is like the most paraphrased thing I've ever said. Uh, I've ever heard. The most like twisted words and putting words in people's mouths ever. Gonna risk all of that. That's the feedback I got from many of you. You understand that? My longtime fans, my supporters reached out to me behind the scenes and this is the feedback I got and that's why I made this decision, okay? <clears throat> no, I understand. Cause there's a lot of people out there who casually watch me and they wanted drama. Like, oh crap, the drama around Dark Side Phil has died down now. So now this is great that Phil's doing this documentary because now the drama will be back. Well, I don't care about you. Okay, let me make that abundantly clear, okay? You ready? Ladies and gentlemen, I need to, I'm going to make a public statement to everyone here. Oh, wow. Ready? Not even this question. That's the wrong one. We're going to okay? get a terrorist statement. What is this? If, if you watch me for drama, I don't care about you. <laughs> Good. Good. I, I don't really want to be acknowledged by him, so I'm just going to keep watching him for drama and expect for him to not care about me. That's good. I'm In perfectly least, fine with it. You are not my concern on this planet. Oh, wow. On this planet. Okay, good. Good. I don't want him to be concerned about me. I want nothing to do with him personally. I just want to watch him for the drama. At all. In any way, shape, or form. There's not a single moment in my life, there's not a breath I take that I think about you or care about your opinion. Okay, now this, I'm, I'm not willing to believe very much. Not me specifically, but the overall troll community. He definitely cares about. Since he spent half of this pre-stream talking about how much he doesn't care about it. If all you care about is drama, yes. when it comes to Dark Side Phil, DSP, or Phil Burnell, I don't give two shits about you. Okay. And I'm happy for you, and I hope you have a great life. Oh, me too, Phil. I'm very happy for you, too, and that you love your life and that you're super happy, and I really hope you have a great life, too. Since we're just going to be sitting here lying to each other, I hope you have a great life, too, Phil. And I have a lot of sympathy for you. A lot. I have no sympathy. Shut up, Dracula Flow. You're ruining my fucking lies, dude. You asshole. Leave me the fuck alone. I don't care about your opinion. Okay. <clears throat> Had to make that as clear as possible because some people just don't get it. Oh yeah, and his uh, and his haircut is awesome. That's right, his haircut is great. All right, <laughs> and his shirt is great too. He looks like a very well-adjusted person and not a medieval peasant. <clears throat> okay, uh, shout-outs. Let's keep going. Yeah. Don't even know what that means. I'm ignoring it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ed, Sir Ed Sheeran did a $5 tip. And this is what I'm not going to talk about because this is what I'm saying. Like, people are now going to start asking. So, what was actually the terms of the documentary? What exactly was going to happen in the documentary? Which each scene? But were you going to make money doing the documentary? And what about this? And what about... Well, why, why wouldn't you talk about it? Obviously, people would have questions about it. I have questions about it. That's why I would like to talk to Mike. So, he can answer my questions. And I can the relay them Tevin to everybody got involved, else. It got cancelled. It's Tevin's fault. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it was somebody specific getting involved or just the thought of people that he doesn't like getting involved, especially from his past. Because I don't think Panda Lee is going to get involved. I'm completely honest. I don't think she was 
uh, in the picture because I think she's well moved on from this and she would want nothing to do with this. So I don't think she would. And it's also kind of, I would see it that um, Mike would think it's, it's like below the belt to have somebody's ex-girlfriend, you know, talking about him in a documentary. I don't think that's something that they were going for. He couldn't care less about us on this planet because he is an alien from another planet. Oh, there on we go. Planet, planet Snortbeg, we are the main attraction and the center of attention, slime. I'm on them Georgetown Geronimos. I'm on THM Nashville Nibblers. I have no sympathy. I live for this shit. This shit ain't nothing to me, man. I'm nice with it. I'm nice with it. Oh, that, there's so many quotables from this shit, man. Big ups, and uh, Vikes and Radiator Drink. It's not even happening. It's definitely none of anyone's business. Because it's not even happening anyway. Why not? So none of it happened, so it doesn't matter. All right? So anything like that. You're never going to get an answer out of me because it's none of anyone's business and I'm not talking about it. Well, I think it's just a fun fact. Since it's not happening, it, why why not? People clearly have a lot of questions about it. So thank you for the tip. Dan the Man has tipped me $10. Thank you to Dan the Man. Okay, he didn't even say Back anything. You did absolutely wait, love, wait. though, this is, great. is that I already got all the legitimate feedback I needed from my viewer base. But now you've got people like Meatball Man in the chat. By the way, legitimate feedback. Let me just tell you something. Legitimate feedback is telling him something that he wants to do. And just validating what he is already thinking. That is to him legitimate feedback. It's not actual constructive criticism. It's not actual feedback. It's telling him something he already believes in. Saying, you had a chance to work with a professional documentarian who would have actually shown your side fairly and you squandered it. Damn. Absolutely. Damn, man. Meatball man, we all know who you are. Oh, wow. Did you dox him? All right. We know who you are. Is it Tevin? Is it me? And we know what part of a community you're part of. And we know why you were hoping this documentary would happen. Drama. You're not fooling anyone. Oh, so he just... Well, now he confirms that he just pulled out of it just because there would be drama coming out of it. And he just couldn't... He couldn't take it. Right? That's why he wanted to see it. You don't want to see my- Wow, this dude is like legitimately paranoid, man. He got detractors living in his walls and under the floorboards of his home. My side be portrayed fairly. You want drama so you can revel in it and enjoy it and laugh at it. That's yeah. the reason you're in chat. But the thing is, they're going to do it regardless. I'm going to do it regardless of this documentary existing or not. But he is the one who loses a lot of possibilities of something good coming out of this. Not every day. See? <laughs> but I love it because people like him act like they're so, oh, yeah, I see I'm a fan and I'm disappointed. You're not a fan. You never were. I just tolerate your existence because I get tired of banning your 14th fucking uh -oh. clone account here. You know, I'm not going to sit here and have a personal dedicated assistant to ban you from chat every time I see your 14, 15 sock pop up. <laughs> Holy shit. He was so angry at this dude. He ran out of breath. Listen to this in the end. Clone account here. You know, I'm not going to sit here and have a personal dedicated assistant to me. so from spiteful. Every time I see your 14, 15 sock pop up. Yeah, in the end, he had no <laughs> breath <shit>. left. <laughs> it was so toxic. Shit, man. <clears throat> okay. I'm just, I'm ignoring all this. Because people are giving a dollar just to talk about trolls. I told you guys I'm not talking about it. So I'm just ignoring all oh, They're going to get their refund. It's me. I'm Meatball Man. Oh, well, there we go. There we go. I think maybe there's a meatball man in, uh, in each and every one of us. Who knows? You're not getting any attention from me if you just want to talk about trolls. But, uh, well, you're not getting any attention, meatball man, so stop flexing about it. Sorry. All right. You've wasted your time. I'm uh, sure we did. <clears throat> Are we still seeing here? This is funny. Oh, now it's funny. Someone tipped $2 and said, when the Lal Kyle podcast inevitably fails because it's going to, and I guess already it's on. Uh, everything is going to inevitably fail. Unless it's uh, Breaking Bad. That way, I wouldn't know. I haven't watched it once. I'm not going to. You know, I'm not involved in that kind of oh, shit. Oh, you know, you know, he wants to go off on a tangent saying, talking about how he wants it to fail, but he, he hasn't even watched it. So it would be too disingenuous, even for Dark Side Phil. I should consider doing a podcast with Wings of Redemption because we both have passion for games and it would be a good show. You do realize <clears throat> that could never happen. Wings is literally 
<laughs> and this is, oh, this is a great segment. I remember this. Literally attached himself to Keemstar. He can, they're tainted now, you guys. Even at some point, if they stop working with Keemstar, they are tainted by Keemstar. They are tainted. Not now do anything without that man. So as long as yeah, he... Yeah, they're, they're now Keemstar's... Um, I don't even know. He owns them or something. Like, he, he, he got them on, their, on, on the fucking team, on lifetime contract. And then he asked, why am I toxic? Uh, I don't know. Why is he toxic, you guys? This has been a very positive stream to me. Complete and I'm a, a member of a cult. The... And a slave to Keemstar, I will have absolutely positively nothing whatsoever to oh, do. Oh, yeah, he, he straight up called them slaves to Keemstar. Wait, let, let me get this up again. Not now do anything without that man. So as long as he is completely beholden and a slave to Keemstar, He's I will have He's a slave to Keemstar. Nothing <laughs> to do <laughs> it's that simple. So. <laughs> the dude actually said it, bro. He actually said Wings and Boogie are Keemstar's slaves. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same guy, by the way, that has people working on all of his channels for free. They all do work for him for free. Every day. <clears throat> they make his thumbnails. They edit the videos for the, 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 um, the throwback channel. They make the assets. You know, all the avatars, banners, everything is just slaves. <clears throat> But Wings and Boogie, the guys that de get paid by Keemstar, they're the slaves. It looks like chat froze for me. Hold on. And I think from yeah, here on out, there's nothing me. interesting, really. Uh, but at this point, he received 50 gifted memberships by uh, an Argentinian person. So they got banned. But the, me the memberships got distributed. So a bunch of people became members as this was happening. So it made him even more pissed off. Froze. It completely froze. <clears throat> I remember this because right. people were posting screenshot of the pop-ups on Discord. <clears throat> I have received a $20 tip from One Minute Man. Oh, no. We get the stupid One Minute Man message. I liked him more when he was a cuck without um, any kind of an ability to say something. Thank you, One Minute Man, for the $20 tip. Let's get that animation going. Because anytime he decides to say something, is the most, like, dick-licking, ball-washing response ever. Is the most, like, it's just two guys that are secretly in love with each other, but nobody else should know, so they try and keep it low-key. Here we go. <clears throat> nice tap, tap, tap. We show off the haircut. Look at this haircut. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh my god, look at this, man. This is sick. How did they fuck him up this bad? How did they fuck him up this bad? You start from the beginning, it's all like... It's like, it doesn't make sense. It's so uneven. The fade is uneven. It, sometimes it's it's like... Oh, I, I don't even know how to explain it. They fucked his shit up. And his wife's too, because now we can say... Now we can just straight up say they should go to a different place, man. Not twirls and curls. Curls and twirls? So... Come glasses and one minute, man. Thank you so much for one minute, man. Thank you so much for the day so far. Says, feel you already have peak exposure on YouTube. After 15 years, sadly, the YouTube audience formed an opinion on you. The documentary isn't going to change anything. You seem to be doing well now. Just don't screw it up. And I would prefer Baldur's Gate 3 over today's game. Of course you would. Listen, one minute, man. We all know that you love Baldur's Gate 3. You know? I, and again, even though I'm going to be playing Tekken 8 and Like a Dragon a lot, I'm going to keep Baldur's Gate 3 in the rotation. Oh, and now we're talking about video games. I'm skipping this, dude. 32 months, and he says your detractors are a wild bunch. I have they the are. craziest detractors they, on the planet. Oh, I'm, I'm sure Wings wants a talk. I'm sure Cyrax wants a talk. He has no idea how insane some of the other trolls oh, are, dude. Do you condone VPN Argentina gifted members to Phil? Uh, I don't condone giving him any money of uh, in any capacity, because that's the only reason he's there, to collect money. But I, I'm going to say it's super fucking funny when he's getting cucked out of receiving real full price memberships and he's so pissed off and the whole mask off thing about how the the whole membership situation is just about supporting him is really funny and ex exposes him but you're not gonna catch me giving him money and i don't condone it but then again people on the internet they're gonna do whatever they want with their money and just whatever they want in general i mean that too i have the I'm absolute just most here insane to, to tell you what i think about on it. this planet you know, stalking me and doing this stuff, quite frankly. Bill, I'm outside of his window right now. Um, 
right now. I don't believe that there- I'm looking at Kat. She's playing Skyrim. Again. There's anyone else that has that level of craziness. Yeah, they do. All right? They I just do. don't. It's funny because people act like it. Oh, well, LTG has, has big haters and Wings has big haters and Boogie has big haters. No, 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 no. No, no, no. The difference is that I don't entertain the the loud cow bullshit. I don't I don't what? buy into it. But why why do they keep hating them? If you what? So because of that, they get incensed and they just create their own what? circle jerking communities of shit. You know, but uh, no based off of today's video, this this podcast, there will be no less than one hundred separate videos made about this. Uh I don't think so. It's gonna be probably around fifty. One hundred separate videos made about this. Okay? So there you go. <clears throat> okay. Oh yeah, that's that's a good point, Jeffro. Uh, this guy, this guy has to be better than them at everything. Even his trolls are better than their trolls. The wildest shit. All right. So I'm just gonna keep again. Idiots coming in with with uh trying to get me to say stuff I'm not gonna talk about here. Like what? Well, here's a, a dollar tip from Sarah, and this is Sarah's opinion, all right? Sarah says, if Mike Klum really was go going to be unbiased and fair with this documentary, why do you break the news on Kiwi Farms, then only do promo interviews with your haters and detractors that want to ruin your life? Um, he invited the actual fans. They just didn't answer the phone. They didn't actually show up. They did not respond. That's why, Sarah. I'm really glad the documentary is canceled. I felt like it would have hurt the community. Now, just to be clear about this, okay? <clears throat> that is not true. Be oh, there we go. So he doesn't even think it's true. Because as I told you, I was working behind the scenes <clears throat> with people from my side. There we go. Positive people that Mike was going to be involved with, but that wasn't going <laughs> to be done publicly. <laughs> this is so stupid, man. I can just imagine it. I can just imagine it. It's him writing like paragraphs to people to tell them what to say in front of the camera positive about him. Yeah, so you should say that I'm, like, really chill. And when you hang out on my streams, it's, like, me doofle, okay? Do you understand? Like, we weren't going to come out in public and say, Hey, fans of Phil, come come inter get an interview with Mike Klum. That wasn't Why happen. not? It was going to be me working with people behind the scenes who were willing to do that because that was going to be <clears throat> personal risk for them. Pers what, you bro? Understand? Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Personal risk. They all just have a username and a avatar on the internet. Personal fucking risk. You know, people who ha have had positive association, positive experiences with me over the years. That's who was going to be involved from my side. Yes, family members were going to be involved. Yes, longtime fans, friends, people like that were going to be in this. Okay? So that was happening. But Mike went out there and did the public side of stuff for the negative side, and that's all that you heard about. Again, here's the thing. <clears throat> Why did you only hear the negative? Because those are the people who were the echo chamber on YouTube. No, that's be you just admitted it's because the positive, you decided to keep it private. That's, that's literally what you just said. And now we're twisting it into a different thing. Public side of stuff for the negative side, and that's all that you heard about. It's literally, you just admitted that. The, the, all the... The public stuff was kept private. Uh, all the positive stuff was kept private because you decided so. And also, when Mike was reaching out to people that like you, they did not respond. And Derek blocked them. That's literally what happened. While when he was reaching out to people that dislike you, they answered. Except me, because it was like 3 a.m. I was actually sleeping. But he talked to Proper. He talked to TJ. He talked to a lot of people. Again, here's the thing. <clears throat> Why? Did you only hear the negative? Because those are the people who are the echo chamber on YouTube. Those are the people who literally are 90% of YouTube today. Toxic idiots. That's what the, the sites become a cesspool of. Drama queens, fucking fake TMZ reporters, gossip girls. Hell yeah. We should normalize gossip. It's so much fucking fun. And he loves gossiping too. And he loves being a fake reporter too because he has DSP fucking news. He is everything he's criticizing he's haters of being except the haters actually embrace it and have a bunch of fucking fun with it and don't give a fuck. And he's sitting here virtue signaling about how good of a fucking person he is as he calls everybody else a mouth drooler on a daily fucking basis. That's how good of a person he is. That's what they are. They're gossip girls. Fucking idiots. And people watch that shit because they're dumb. So that's what you heard.
You heard Mike Klum posted on Kiwi Farms. Mike Klum talked to Review Tech USA. He did. In the meantime, the positive stuff was happening, but you're not going to hear about that. Because you decided to keep it private, right? All you're going to hear is the toxic negative shit. Uh, because it? that was Super public. Fans, except Derek. Yeah, Derek was not invited for obvious reasons. That's what they want, though, because that's how they make their content. When you have no talent, you Dog. benefit from every level of gossip. Dog, please, please stop it with the talent. What is his talent? To play a game? And goat laugh and fake laugh? And react to a video by saying, that's interesting, every 10 seconds? And not even be tra transformative enough for YouTube to leave him up and not take down his video? Because it's not transformative enough? Come on, dude. <clears throat> Come on. What's the fucking talent? Okay, let's continue here. But What's thank the you talent? for the dollar, Sarah. And here's the thing, Sarah. Where is the talent? I totally hear... He's not even talented enough to make his own fucking thumbnails or his own banners or avatars or his own layout. Not talented enough for shit. He's not even talented enough to come up with his own ideas for videos or for the, all the things he asked for suggestions. He's not talented enough to figure it out by himself after 15 years of doing this for a living. Your concern... And I understand it, all right? <clears throat> JDTV says, that, why did I announce the documentary at all? Well, quite frankly, because it kind of already got out there. Uh-huh, yeah, there we go. Because Mike jumped the gun, just like with the side-scrollers. And you see Phil, the honest and transparent Phil, he always wants to keep stuff private. He doesn't want it to be public knowledge. And, you know, when Mike... Because it's going to threaten the, the production of some way. Because the detractors are going to get involved. And they're going to expose him and make him look bad. Exactly like it happened with the side-scrollers. Because his idea with the side-scrollers was to be their guest. And for them to not announce it until maybe like the last day. Or not even announce it at all. And it was like a super surprising thing for everybody. But what Craig did is... Craig didn't know the severity of having Dark Side Phil on your show. And he just announced it just casually. was like, hey, you know what, you guys? We're going to ha be having uh, Phil of DSP Gaming. You guys know DSP? We're going to have him on the show, and we're going to talk about video games. And then it blew up. Started talking to people on the internet about it. Immediately, it got out there, and it was like days of people already hounding me about it. Quite honestly, I don't think I was ready to really talk about it yet because we hadn't done any work on it yet. You know, we hadn't sat down. We hadn't you know, written out any particular scenes. We hadn't filmed. But Phil, being so protective of this makes it seem like you have something to hide, bro. If you're really as transparent as you claim to be, and you're so fearless, and you're willing to stand up for yourself, then why bother hiding it so much? Very weird. Very weird. Because people that usually do this have something to hide that they don't want exposed. And that's why they try and, and keep everything low-key. I wasn't really ready to talk about it, but the moment that Mike went out there to try to get the, you know, that side of it, boom, it just hit the internet, crazy viral nonsense. So it just kind of happened that way. I don't think it was intended to be that way. You know, if you haven't noticed, I haven't even really talked that much about it because I told you guys I wasn't really ready yet, you know? So again, pretty much accuses uh, Mike and throws him under the bus accuses him of publicizing it way too early yep we were we were we're in development stages of ideas of things we wanted to do with this documentary that would have worked and been entertaining for everyone not just my side not just the hater side but everyone even newcomers who don't know who i am would have liked it and also dsp the guy who doesn't care about the haters was considering which ways you can make the documentary so it's also going to be entertaining for them so he cares about them but if you didn't think so it just kind of blew up the way it did because of the way how toxic youtube and is Oh, yeah. so it, it became popular because, oh, well, Mike admitted that it was happening and then people talked about it and speculated about it and were getting excited about it and now he got it canceled. So he kind of canceled it because it's, he's scared of trolling, pretty much. It kind of sounds like it to me. <clears throat> oh, let's see here. I think it's, it's done. Documentary didn't happen. <laughs> 33 Cent says, why would you sign off on a documentary if you thought it might hurt you in the future? You should just do your own. Yeah. Again, the documentary didn't happen. <laughs> what, what kind of a response is this to this kind of a very easy question to answer? <laughs> I didn't sign off. You know what I'm saying? What are you talking about? Yeah, you did. 
the guy put in a bunch of work to get the documentary set up. You were in pre-production. You kind of signed off on it by committing that you were going to do it. That's why the dude flew across the country to have meal with you and Cat. Or maybe Cat had several meals and you guys just had one. I didn't sign off. There's no... The documentary is, doesn't exist. I don't know what you mean. You guys are acting like there's a giant you know, legal contract agreement and we did all this work and everything and now it's done. Well, well, Mike did all this work, but clearly the way he's talking about him seems like he doesn't really respect the work that Mike did. Oh, that didn't even happen. Because I'm sure Mike spent actual dozens of hours talking to people and researching stuff and preparing to do that and maybe even flying out and doing certain things at certain places. Happen. I don't, so I don't even know what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> and this is pretty fucking disrespectful. This dude laughing off somebody else's effort so much. <laughs> it, we're in the initial stages. Yes. Also known as you are in the process of, uh, like, actually making it. You're in pre-production. Oh, of planning this thing out. Right? We didn't even... And now he tries to downplay all the effort. You see, he's trying to downplay it. But it was basically nothing, dude. Visual filming times yet as i told you you guys would know when we scheduled filming times because it was going to affect these streams so i was going to tell you when that was going to happen that didn't even happen yet right? bro do you think he got paranoid that when he tells people that he's going to be filming maybe he's he's thinking that a detractor might show up because he's telling you know he's saying like, oh this day is we're going to be filming somewhere and then like a detractor finds him with like a sniper rifle and shoots from him, <laughs> shoots at him from like five kilometers away, and they would never find him. But we know, we all know it was Tevin. Right? <laughs> okay. Hello. Uh, play cool, tip the dollar. He says, any true fan of yours and a logical human being will look to your announcement. Initially, they're going to be surprised, but I understand your points. We wish you the best, and we understand why it's canceled. It's no, we don't. We do for the current status quo. Yeah, what? The current st Bro, get the fuck out of here, you moron. I was interested in the documentary for what it would be and the positive effect that it would have in bringing new people in. Outside of that, I just don't care. Drama is pitiful content for pitiful minds. I'm glad you avoid it like the plague that it is. Cheers and have a great stream. Thank you, Play Cool. Yeah, thanks for telling me what I already think and validating me. I appreciate it, dude. It would be a pity if it told me something that I wasn't believing. And then I would have to accuse you of being a troll. But I believe that's it. And if even if it wasn't, I don't even have uh, any more time, dude. Because we're about to start the thing that you're going to be forwarded to right away. So thanks for watching. I'll see you around on the other side of the internet with a bunch of other guys, and we're going to be talking about the same thing. Uh, but it's going to be very interesting. And also, we're having uh, Atlas the Bookkeeper on. So you guys are going to be loving it and interacting with it. And all the Argentinians are going to be uh, watching, obviously, enjoying, chilling, having fun. And um, that's about it. Listen to this thing, and the stream is off. Everybody knows I hate fat asses. See, the numbers don't lie. When you scup on a scale that skyrockets past 300 pounds, you might be a little overweight. So right now, you are 100% fat ass. But if you eliminate the beer, the potato chips, the french fries, you got a 50% chance of losing weight. But since you like donuts and Skittles also, eliminate those, and your chance of losing weight are a 47 and two-thirds chance. But right now, I believe... You will remain 100% fat ass.